come into a comfortable seat on your mat. This can be propped if your hips are a little sore. You can sit on a blanket or a pillow or even a block. If you need that height, you want to have a little bit of that anterior tilt in your pelvis with that. So closing the eyes down here. Coming to your breath. You can have the palms face up to receive the energy from the universe. Or if you want to feel more grounded, you can have the palms face down on your knees. Rolling the shoulders up and back. Noticing where your anchor point is with your breath. You feel the breath in your nostrils, in your chest, ribs, or into your low belly. Without judgment, there's nothing wrong with any of those points. Just focusing your attention on that spot where your anchor point is. Just observing your breath with curiosity. switch on your ujjayi pranayama with this breath practice you're constricting the back of your throat so that you can come into this oceanic breath this will be an audible breath so it'll sound something like this that breath in and out through your nose, feeling the breath sweeping through that constricted throat space. We're going to start to bring some movement into our upper body. So grounding into your sit bones, you can start to rotate your upper body around in circles. Your circles can be as big or as small as you'd like. So thinking of inhaling your chest forward, opening up the chest, and exhaling, pushing back into that upper back and rounding the spine. Inhales bring you forward, and exhales bring you back. Feeling into those hips. You can start to move the head and neck along with this. Getting some movement into the spine and the hips. Keeping your attention on your breath. And on your next inhale, switch your directions. Finishing your last exhale, coming to a neutral spine. We're going to move into tabletop position. For this, if you have uh, knee problems or you find that the floor is a bit too hard, you can bring a folded up blanket underneath the knees. Ensuring that your tabletop is stacked and active. So stacking the shoulders over the wrists, widening the fingers, and stacking your hips over your knees. We're going to inhale here, drop the belly, inhaling, opening that chest to the front of the room and lifting the head. If that's hard on the neck, you can keep the head at a neutral position, but opening up your back body. Inhaling and exhale, we're gonna to start to curl our pelvis under, pressing into those hands and pushing up into your upper back, dropping the head and letting it hang here squeezing the navel to the spine to ring out that breath. Again, inhaling, dropping the belly, coming into cow pose. 
and exhale, squeezing into that angry cat. Flowing with your own breath and a few more of these, you can close down the eyes. And finishing your last exhale and coming back to a neutral spine. We're going to bring our big toes together at the back of the mat, widening our knees mat width or more apart. And you're gonna sink your tailbone back towards your heels, reaching the arms out forward and bringing the head down towards the mat. Letting your forehead rest on the mat. If your forehead doesn't reach the mat, you can place a pillow or a block under your head, anything that you can rest on so that you're not holding in your neck. If the shoulders are feeling tender here, you can bring your arms down either in between your legs to grab onto your heels, or you can just have the arms down by your sides. Whichever is most comfortable, just sinking that tailbone lower. You can press into your hands if they're forward to really press into your mat, creating traction in the spine and pressing that tailbone back farther towards the heels. Breathing here. Throughout the practice, child's pose is a great place to come back to, to reconnect with your breath. You're gonna push into those hands and begin to come forward, removing your blanket under your knees if you had one and you're gonna come all the way down, laying onto your stomach. The hands are lined up underneath the shoulders, and you're gonna to start to peel back those shoulders, shining the sternum forward, lifting the head. Again, head can stay neutral if your neck is tender. Coming up into your baby cobra. In this position, you are not using your hands to press you up. You can even try out lifting your hands off the ground and then exhaling, the head comes back to the ground. Let's do that again. We're gonna peel those shoulders back, inhaling, using the strength of your upper back to pull you up into your baby cobra, shining that chest forward, little weight in the hands. And exhaling back down. We're gonna push into those hands, coming up through tabletop, spreading the fingers, tucking the toes, and raising up your tailbone into the air for your downward facing dog. Pedaling out those feet. You can sway your hips side to side. Ensuring in your downward facing dog that you're rooting your pointer and thumb fingers into the ground to take the pressure off your wrists. Letting your head hang in between your arms. Heels are feeling heavy towards the ground. Your heels may never come to the ground in downward facing dog, and that's completely fine. Having a little micro bend in your knees, again, tilting the tailbone upwards. We're gonna inhale, gaze towards our thumbs, and step or hop to the front of your mat, releasing into Uttanasana, standing forward fold. Really feeling the strength of your legs here. Noticing how they've got you held. You can bend into your knees as much as you'd like to really drape the torso over those legs. Reaching for opposite elbows. You can rock side to side. Shake the head yes or no. And taking a deep bend into those knees, we're gonna ragdoll, roll ourselves up, vertebra by vertebra. Shoulders roll up and back, head is the last thing to come up. And arms sweep up overhead. And exhale the hands to Anjali Mudra, heart center. Feeling strong here in our mountain pose. Lifting up the toes to engage your arches and your feet. 
Feeling even weight in both feet and all corners of your feet pressing down, releasing the toes deliberately to the ground. Becoming active in your legs, engaging the quads, drawing your knees up the fronts of the legs. You can roll the shoulders up and back, releasing the hands to the sides, palms facing forward, squeezing all of the muscles of the body into the bones, tucking that tailbone down towards the floor while lengthening the crown of the head upwards. Feeling strong and stable. We're going to inhale our hands, sweep up overhead, palms meeting at the center, and we're going to exhale, drop our right hand down to the side. Inhale to create space. Again, noticing where your shoulders are here. You don't want to bring them up to the ears. Leaving the shoulders down the body, creating space in between the ribs. Reaching up and exhale, sliding that right hand down the side of the leg and coming into a side bend. Not crunching over, you want to think of stretching yourself up over a beach ball gazing up towards the hand or down at the ground if your neck is not feeling that. Inhaling, coming back up to center. Exhale, release the left hand down the side of the leg, inhaling to create space, and exhaling, extending over that beach ball. Inhaling to center, and flowing with your own breath. Exhale, the hand down and over into your side stretch, inhaling back to center, exhaling to the other side, and inhaling back to center. Now we are going to bring our hands down back to Anjali Mudra Heart Center at the top of your mat, and we are going to step our right leg back into a high lunge. So feeling strong and rooted into that front left foot, you're going to step back a little wider out. You don't want your legs right in line with each other. You want to keep your legs hip distance apart, just stepping straight back. Noticing what your hips are doing here, sinking back into that back foot and lowering your back knee to the ground, untucking the toes. If your knee is sore here, you can place the blanket underneath, sinking into that front right hip flexor. Now notice where your hips are facing. Energetically pulling your left hip back and pushing your right hip forward to even out those hips. You can press into the top of your back foot to release some pressure off the knee. Inhaling the arms up overhead. Staying strong and stable here. Exhaling the hands come down to frame the foot and pressing the hips back, straightening out the front left leg, flexing the toes back. You don't want to curl and crunch into this. Inhale to extend out of your hip, chin coming forward, and think of bringing your chin to your shin. Again, checking in with your hips, noticing if you're sinking into one side, evening those hips out, breathing into that hamstring. We're going to inhale forward back to that low lunge, Anjaniyasana, inhaling the arms up. Strength in those legs. Exhale, the hands come back down and press the hips back into your half split. Inhaling, plant that front foot again, tucking the toes of the back foot and coming up into your high lunge. You're going to become light on that back foot and you're going to step straight up to meet the left leg, folding down over those legs. Bending the knees, inhaling and sweeping the arms up overhead. Hands come to Anjali Mudra Heart Center. Taking a breath here, noticing the differences between the two legs and how your body feels now that you've run out one side. Hands coming to the hips. We're going to root through that right foot and step the left leg back strong. Again, staying hip width apart with that left leg. Dropping the knee, untucking the back toes, 
pressing into the top of that back foot to release the knee. Again, you can move your blanket or prop under your knee if that's needed here. Pressing into that hip flexor, noticing with this pose that your knee is stacked over your ankle joint. You don't want the knee coming forward. Inhaling, arms come up. Exhale, hands come down to frame the foot and extending your tailbone back, flexing your right leg and exhaling chin to shin. Noticing your hips and where they're aligned, are they even? And inhale, coming forward into that low lunge. Arms come up. Pulling those hips energetically towards each other to meet at the center. And exhaling, hands come back down. Last time, extending the tailbone back, flexing the front leg. Inhaling, planting that front foot, tucking the back toes and coming up into your high lunge. Again, growing soft in that back foot and stepping forward to meet your front foot in Uttanasana, forward fold. Bending those knees, inhale, sweeping the arms up overhead. Palms meet overhead and hands come down at heart center. Breathing here. Pressing into your feet again, checking in that you're not gripping in your toes. Lift the toes up and place them back down one at a time on the mat. Releasing the arms down into Tadasana, coming into our sun salutations. Strong, rooted, while rising up through the crown of your head. We're going to inhale, hands sweep up overhead. Palms meet at the top, perhaps allowing a small back bend. And exhale, we're going to fold forward and drape the body over those legs. Inhale, planting the hands, stepping both feet back to your high plank. Dropping the knees, chest and chin and coming to lay down on your stomach. We're going to inhale into our back bend baby cobra and exhale coming through tabletop and lifting your tailbone up for downward facing dog taking a breath or two here notice where your shoulders are are they up at your ears or are you rolling them down your back pressing into those fingertips inhale gazing at your thumbs and stepping or hopping your way back to the front of your mat and exhaling, Uttanasana, forward fold, releasing the back. Bending the knees, inhale, rising up, palms meet overhead. And exhale, hands come to heart center. Taking in breath in and out here. Flowing with your own breath through these sun salutations. Inhale, the arms sweep up overhead. Baby back bend. And exhale, folding forward. Inhale, planting the hands, stepping back into your high plank. Exhaling, knees, chest, chin. Coming, laying onto your mat. Inhaling into your back bend. And exhaling, coming through tabletop. Pressing into those hands and feet, coming into your downward facing dog. Breathing here. Opening that tailbone and back body up to that back wall. Inhale, gazing at the thumbs and stepping or hopping your way to the front of the mat. Forward fold. Bending the knees and inhale the arms up overhead. And hands come through to Anjali Mudra on your exhale. We'll do one more round of sun salutations. Flowing with your own breath. Inhale, arms come up. Back bend, exhale, forward fold. Inhale, placing the hands steady and coming into your strong high plank. Dropping to knees, chest, chin, coming down onto your stomach. Inhale, peel the shoulders back, baby cobra. And exhale, pressing into the hands, rising the tailbone, 
Coming into your downward facing dog, taking a breath here. Inhale, gazing at the thumbs, stepping or hopping to the front of your mat, into your forward fold. And inhale, sweeping the arms up overhead. And hands coming down to Anjali Mudra on your exhale. Take a few breaths here. Feeling into your body, noticing what's been awakened or warmed, if there are any emotions moving through the body that weren't there before. Now, rooting all of your weight into your right foot, not sinking into that hip. You want to think of just rising up into that foot. So you might be able to lift the left foot off the ground. You can bring your toes to the ground by your ankle and your heel to your ankle space. Tree pose. If you'd like to come deeper into your tree pose, you can bring your foot up onto the calf, or you can grab your foot and tuck it right up into that upper thigh, pressing with the heel and the thigh, equal pressure into each other, squeezing to hold that foot there. Noticing your posture here, rooting down to rise up, gazing at a certain point that is unmoving in front of you, keeping the hands at heart center or opening your branches up. If your foot is remaining on the ground, you are still a tree, you just have bigger roots. Breathing here. Hands coming back to heart center, coming out with as much ease and grace as you came in, releasing the knee to the front, keeping that foot hovered. And we're going to take that foot and step it straight back into a high lunge. Here we can step our stance in a little bit closer, tucking that tailbone, lengthening it towards the ground, bending into that front knee again, ensuring that your knee is lined up over your ankle joint, inhaling the arms up overhead. Warrior one variation. Feeling the legs strong here, pressing into both the front and back foot as if you're gonna rip your mat in half. Exhaling, you can drop that back heel so that your front heel is in line with the arch of your back foot. Windmilling the arms open to warrior two. Breathing, stretching your back leg while keeping it strong and engaged. Keeping a micro bend in that back knee so that you're not overextending. Pulling the knee up your leg, bending into that front knee. Feeling the strength in your body here. Ensure that your shoulders are rolled down, twisting your arms so that your palms are face up. And back down. And the exhale, dropping your right elbow to your leg, sweeping your left arm forward and up overhead into your extended side angle. Pressing into that bottom hand to lift your rib cage away from that leg. Feeling the strength in the legs here. Inhaling, windmilling your hands back up to warrior two. Keeping that bend in the front knee, tucking that tailbone down. <coughs> Excuse me. We are now going to straighten that front leg. Keeping the strength in the legs, ensuring that the legs aren't hyperextended, bringing both knees intentionally up engaging the quads. We're going to extend our right arm forward as far as we can, reach, 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 and dropping down to the leg or blocks or the ground, as long as you can keep your chest space open. So if I'm on the ground here and lifting my arm up, my chest is facing down still. So you wanna bring yourself up to a place where you can breathe the arm and the chest open. Offering your chest up the sky. Head can be gazing up at the thumb or down at the foot if that's more comfortable for the neck. Now engaging the abs, 
taking a slight bend into that front knee, we're going to use our core strength to sweep our arms back up into warrior two, bending into that front knee. From here, we're going to place the hands on the hips, swivel both toes forward, bringing the toes farther in and the heels farther out. Inhaling here, strong legs, pulling the kneecaps up the legs, and we're gonna hinge right at the hip, sending our chin and chest forward as if painting down the wall in front of us. Slowly coming down, hands come to the floor or a block. Inhale, a little flat back here, and exhale, folding down into your wide-legged forward fold. Letting the head hang here. Again, noticing where the weight is in both of your feet equally. Keeping those legs active. We're gonna inhale to a flat back. Squeeze into the core. Perhaps taking a micro bend in the knees, hands come up to the hips. Inhaling back up. Strong. Exhale. Twisting the toes of that left foot forward coming into our warrior two legs on the opposite side. We're gonna bend into that front knee, tucking the tailbone, navel to spine, lifting up and opening strong, palms face up to roll the shoulders down the back and returning the back to face forward. Your drishti, your gaze is upon your middle finger of the front arm. Exhaling, dropping that right elbow to your thigh bringing that upper arm forward and around to extend through your side body, noticing the angle from the outside of your foot, pressing into the outside of that back foot and drawing the energetic line up, releasing through your fingers. Think of pulling the energy from the earth and shooting it out your fingers. Gaze is up at your elbow, down at the ground, bending into that knee. Inhale, using our core strength to windmill those arms back up to warrior two. Extending that front knee. And again, straightening, reaching as far with that left arm forward as you can. Reach, reach, reach. Arm comes down to a block or your leg. Sweeping your chest open. Gazing up at that thumb or down at your foot. Now engaging the full core, perhaps getting a micro bend into that front knee, pressing into those feet and lifting yourself back up into warrior two. We're going to swivel our back arm around to meet the front while popping up off our back heel, up into our high lunge, twisting facing the other side of the room, arms up, pressing into this bend, warrior one. Feeling light in that back foot, hands come to the hips, and we're gonna step our back leg up to meet our front leg. Feeling strong in both feet here. Letting our weight coming into our left leg, perhaps floating the right. Toes to the ground, heel to the ankle for tree pose. Foot to the calf, or bringing the foot all the way up onto your thigh making sure that you're never placing the foot onto your knee joint. You don't want to extend that knee out too far. Rooting down to rise up. Again, hands can come to Anjali Mudra, heart center, or they can extend your branches all the way up overhead. Breathing here. Coming down how you came in, hands coming to heart center. Releasing that knee forward and down to the ground. Relaxing those arms down by the sides, Tadasana, mountain pose. Lifting up the toes, rooting into those feet. Feeling strong here, feeling how much activation you created in the legs. Knowing that you will always be held by your body and the earth. We 
are going to come into a little bit of fun here. We're going to do some crow play. So if you have a block available to you, please grab your block. You can do this without a block. Um, first, what we're going to try is coming into a squat, bringing the heels very close together. Toes can be out, face forward, whatever, but bringing the, the toes together or the heels together. You can come up with your feet onto your block to really lift those hips high. So you wanna plant both of your hands energetically into the ground, pressing into those palms, pressing into those fingertips. And what you wanna do is lift your tailbone, lift your bum up as high as you can to bring your knees high up into your armpits. Thinking of either placing the knees on the outsides of the arms and squeezing them in as you engage, or if it's comfortable with the uh, triceps muscle, you can bring your knee to the back of your arm, but being very careful here, noticing if your muscle slips out of the way, your leg may release. So coming in very carefully. If you're coming in from the ground, you can do that as well without the block. If you are afraid to add some safety to it, you can place a bolster or a blanket in front of your face, just in case. If you do start to come forward, lowering the head instead of landing on your face but we're not gonna do that. <laughs> so we wanna create a triangle with our hands and our gaze. So placing the palms under your shoulders, gaze will come forward to the tip of your triangle. Lifting up your bum, bending into those legs, and pressing into those hands, leaning forward. Perhaps playing lifting one leg, putting that back down, lifting the other leg, putting that back down. Noticing already how much you're engaging in your legs. You want to also engage into your abs, bending your back, pressing into your hands, and squeezing navel to spine. You also want to engage Mula Bandha, your root lock. So squeezing your pelvic floor and pulling up with that. So again, coming up high onto the feet, bringing those knees in high, high, high up towards your shoulders and your armpits, gaze is forward, leaning forward into the hands, lifting one foot, perhaps lifting the second foot, squeeze, 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 and releasing back down, coming into child's pose on your mat, knees come wide, tailbone sinks back, arms reach forward or come alongside you. Coming back to your breath. Now coming forward into a seated position. We're gonna stretch the legs out in front of us, keeping the legs active, the feet active, and flex back towards you. Coming forward up out of the hip joint, you don't wanna be sinking into your back here. Opening the chest, hands come flat to the ground. Dandasana, staff pose. Strong here. You can take your right leg and open it to the side, bringing your left foot into your thigh. Almost like a little seated tree pose. We're gonna hinge up out of the hip, energetically reaching through the crown of the head, lengthening, lengthening, lengthening. And bringing your hands forward. Start with a flat back, coming forward into your half dragonfly pose. Trying to keep both sit bones on the ground. Feeling that stretch. I find in this pose that my heel starts to hurt. So you can bring a blanket under your heel. And inhaling to create space. Exhale, start to round the spine and drop the head towards the ground. Feeling that stretch in the right hamstring. Inhaling slowly, starting to come back up. Extending both legs out forward, giving them a little shake. Feeling if one leg now feels a little longer than the other one, perhaps. You can extend your left leg out wide, bringing a blanket under that heel if you need it, and bringing that right foot flat into your thigh in your seated tree pose. We're gonna inhale, energetically shooting up through the crown of the head, 
Think of a marionette with a little string coming right out of the crown and attaching to the ceiling. Opening your chest. On your exhale, coming forward with a flat back, hinging out of those hips. Again, trying to stay planted in both of your sit bones. An inhale will create space. And an exhale, folding, curling the spine and dropping the head towards the ground. Releasing out of the right hip and the left hamstring, keeping those toes active on your left leg. Inhale, bringing the head up, starting to come back up. And we're gonna come into butterfly pose. So this is very similar to Sukhasana, easy pose, the cross-legged position we started class with, only we're gonna keep our feet together. In Ashtanga yoga, you wanna open your feet up like a book. But for this one, what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep our feet peeled together, start to let those knees drop without pushing on them. Maybe give your, your butterfly wings a little flap here. Noting if there's any tension or issue with your hip, you may not want to bounce the hip. Just letting gravity start to pull you down. If this is too much, you can grab your blocks, placing them under the knees to give you some support. Otherwise, just letting them fall as they will. Again, not collapsing into the lower back. You want to be sitting up forward, coming up out of your hips. Holding onto the toes, if that's comfortable, the ankles, just making sure you're keeping those feet together. We're gonna inhale, bringing our chest forward and up out of those hip joints. And exhale, folding over flat back. Just coming as far forward as is comfortable. You can also use those elbows to help press those knees open here. Inhale to create space. And exhale, curling the spine, dropping the head towards the feet. Feeling that stretch in both hip flexors and in your back. Inhale, raising the head up, followed by the body. We're gonna extend our legs back out in front of us in that Dandasana staff pose. Again, where's your back? Are you extended up or are you sinking in? Stepping upwards, we're gonna draw our right foot in as close as you can to your bum, keeping it flat on the ground. You're gonna bring your left arm to squeeze around that right leg. You can also just bring the hand to the knee if you can't quite come all the way around, or you can extend up and come to the outside. Inhaling here, exhale, sweeping that right arm behind you, tenting the fingers. Inhale, create space, rise up through that crown, and exhale, twisting towards that back shoulder. Gaze moving towards the back shoulder. Tucking the chin slightly. Breathing fully into the belly, feeling it pressing against your leg, massaging your inner organs. Inhaling, head comes to center, followed by the rest of the body. Releasing that right leg down, wiggling that out and bringing the left leg in close to your little bum. Inhaling up, wrapping that right arm around. And the left arm comes behind you, tenting the fingers. Inhale, create space, rise up through your crown. Exhale, twisting towards that shoulder, tucking the chin slightly. Inhale, head comes back to center followed by the rest of the body. We are going to move into Navasana, boat pose. If you have uh, tailbone issues, pending that you can actually still come onto your tailbone, um, I like to put a little blanket under me. You can put a pillow, whatever's the most comfortable for you. But you need to have not something as high as a block. You wanna still be grounded in this pose. So you're gonna lean back to start engaging the abs Feet come flat to the ground, holding up behind the knees, pressing that body up, flat back, leaning back. Perhaps lifting the toes, coming to the heels, leaning that straight back, feeling your abs. We can inhale, roll the shoulders back and down, extending the arms out to the side, and perhaps lifting your feet up, 
into your boat pose. Breathing here. Making sure you're extending up out of your chest, not rounding into your back. You can also keep holding onto the backs of your knees to take a little of the edge off. You can also fully straighten those front legs, but ensuring again that you're not dumping into your back. And releasing that down. <sighs> Rocking that out. We're gonna come into boat pose two more times. So, planting the feet, hands come behind the knees. Extend upwards through the crown of the head, leaning back. Heels come up off the ground, arms come out to the side, floating here in your little lake with your little boat, perhaps bringing your sails up to the sky, Woo! breathing, arms come back out to the side, squeeze here, and dropping those heels down, rocking that out, <coughs> excuse me. Last time, flattening those feet on the ground, leaning back, stretching that chest forward. Heels come off the ground, float the arms out to the side. Smile. Continuing to breathe here. Noticing if your lower back is starting to curve, pulling yourself up, feeling this in here your back, your legs, your chest, your stomach, maybe even your arms. Squeezing up just a little bit higher and letting that go. Ooh, rocking that out. Great job, removing your prop. Coming all the way down onto your stomach, into your sphinx pose. So lining your elbows up under your shoulders, palms are flat on the ground pressing your pelvis into the ground to release anything off of your lower back, peeling those shoulders back and rolling them down the back to open your chest to the front of the room, pressing your feet into the ground as well, zipping those legs up together, perhaps releasing the head up and back, or you can tuck the chin and gaze down at your hands. Releasing the chest to the ground, arms come to the sides. We're going to come into Salabhasana, Locust Pose. Squeezing those feet together, beginning to lift them up off the ground. Peeling those shoulders back, lifting the palms up and lifting the chest. Squeezing into your back, lifting the thighs and the knees. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. Pull up a little bit higher. Exhale, releasing down, using your hands as a pillow. Releasing one ear to the ground. Letting your heels fall open, toes come in. Bringing those arms back beside you, palms up, forehead comes to the ground. We're gonna come into locust pose once more, rolling the shoulders back, pressing those thighs together, lifting your body up off the ground, keeping the legs together, squeezing that back together, pulling your chest forward, holding it for just a little bit longer, squeeze just a little bit higher, and release the opposite ear to the ground, letting the heels fall open, toes come together, releasing that. Pulling over onto your back. You're going to bring your heels up towards your bum as close as you can to where you can almost brush your heels with your fingertips. Lifting up the shoulders and tucking the shoulder blades underneath your body, really opening that chest. You're going to press into your feet, start to lift your hips off the ground. Think of pressing your rib cage and your chest towards your chin, tucking those shoulders under your body, pressing your hips up towards the sky, chest to chin. Hold, 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 squeeze here, and slowly, slowly releasing those shoulders out and rolling down, 
vertebrae by vertebrae. Curling into your pelvis so that your tailbone is the last thing to touch the ground. Windshield wipering the knees side to side. And drawing the knees into your chest. Wrapping your arms around, giving yourself a little hug, rolling side to side here. Dropping both feet back to the ground, you're going to lift up your right foot and cross your right ankle over your knee. Keeping that foot active and flexed, you're going to think of energetically opening that right knee as far as you can without necessarily pressing on it with your hand, just to where you can push it with gravity, feeling that open. If this is your pose, you can stay here. If you'd like to go a little deeper, you can lift up that left leg, reach through and Interlock the hands behind the thigh or above the shin. Releasing the shoulders and the head back to the ground. Keeping both feet active and flexed here. Again, energetically moving that right knee back in space. Exhales might bring your legs and feet a little closer to your body. Inhales. Creating space, noticing where you're feeling this breathing into that spot, sending your breath into your glute or your hip. On your next exhale, releasing those legs back down to the ground, widening your feet about mat width apart, and windshield wipering the knees. Releasing that. Planting both feet, bringing your left ankle onto your right knee, pressing that left knee back in space, keeping that foot active and flexed. Staying here or lifting up your right leg, interlacing the fingers behind it, keeping both feet flexed and active, relaxing the head and shoulders back towards the ground. Pressing that left knee open. Inhaling to create space and room in your body and exhaling, perhaps bringing those feet closer to your chest. Sending your breath into that glute and hip. Visualize your breath swirling around that hip joint, swirling into your glute muscle, releasing some tension there. Next exhale, dropping the feet back to the mat, opening them wider than the mat, and windshield wipering those knees side to side. Opening your arms up to a T beside you, bringing the knees up at a 90 degree angle, and you're going to drop your knees towards your right hand, making sure that your left shoulder stays rooted into the ground. You can bring your right hand to those knees, and gaze can look over towards your left thumb. Twisting that out, wringing out the spine, rooting into that left shoulder, keeping that shoulder blade down on the ground. Breathing deeply into your stomach here, feeling the twist in your body. Inhaling your head back to center, using your core to pull your knees back up to center. Realigning here, keeping the arms out at a T, and dropping those knees over to the left. Again, rooting through the right shoulder blade. You can bring the left hand up to those knees. Gaze goes towards your right thumb. Breathing into your belly, feeling this twist wringing you out like a towel. Inhaling the head back to center and bringing your knees up using your core strength. We're going to drop our legs down, extending them fully. We're going to extend the arms up overhead reaching with the left hand for the right wrist. You're gonna open your right leg wider than that width apart and take your left leg and cross your ankle over the right, 
pulling your shoulders over towards the right, creating a crescent moon with your body, feeling that stretch in your side body, sending your breath into your left ribs. Relaxing the shoulders. Coming back to center. Grasping your right fingers around your left wrist, opening your left leg wider than mat width apart and crossing your right ankle over that. Scooting your shoulders over into your little crescent moon, sending the breath into your right rib cage. Feeling the extension through your side body, extending that hip, feeling the extension in your shoulder, feeling it in the side of your core and your rib cage. Bringing the body back to center, bringing the knees up and into your chest, giving yourself a little squeeze here. Perhaps opening into happy baby, grasping your feet with your hands, either on the outsides of your feet, the insides of your feet. If you can't quite reach there, holding onto ankles, shins, whatever's comfortable here. Pulling towards your feet while pressing your feet towards your hands, feeling your lower tailbone releasing to the ground. You can rock side to side. You can play with bending one knee in, extending one leg out as straight as you want, as straight as is comfortable. Bringing that leg back in, extending out the other leg. And bringing both feet into center. Extending your feet out long, coming into final resting pose, Shavasana. Lifting up and tucking your shoulder blades under the body, letting the arms fall open, palms face up. Think of Lengthening your tailbone down, flattening that lower back onto the ground. Feet fall open to the sides, tucking your chin slightly to lengthen your neck along the mat. Releasing here. Feeling into your body. Noticing what's moved, what's been released. What emotions presented themselves in this practice. without judgment, accepting what your body did for you in this practice, what your mind did for you. Not holding on any one thought or one spot in the body, just curiously checking out the space inside of you. We're gonna take a deep inhale through the nose Exhale, opening the mouth and sigh. Again, deep inhale through the nose. Exhale, audibly sigh. And the last one is your loudest one yet. Inhale, gather up any leftover tension. And exhale, release it out, sigh. Feeling your body sink you into the ground. Knowing that you are held. Tuning inward and noticing your breath. Finding that anchor point again. Without judgment, just curiously seeing what happens when you inhale the cool air swirling through your nose down your throat, through your chest and lungs and cooling in the belly. And on your exhale, noticing the warm air being pressed out of your belly, coming up and out your throat, warming your nostrils on the way out. Leaving your attention on your breath changing anything, not deepening anything, just observing.
beginning to deepen your breath. Bring some movement back into your body, wiggling your fingers and toes. Perhaps rolling your wrists and ankles in one direction. More. Reaching the arms up overhead and extending your body long through the toes and through the arms. Stretching that out, letting out a sigh or a yawn. Bringing the feet back flat to the ground, knees keep pointing up. And rolling over onto your right side of your body into the fetal position. Using that right arm under your head as a pillow, resting here for a moment. Keeping the eyes closed or softened, pressing into that left hand and using it to help you lift yourself up into an easy, comfortable seat. Hands coming to your knees, rolling the shoulders up and back. Noticing what's changed from the beginning of your practice, what feels more open. Feeling the gentle tingling throughout your body, the buzz of having created movement and heat. Sending your breath down deep to any particular body part that you would normally send judgment. And with your breath, sending love and acceptance. Feeling grounded, held by the earth. Thanking your body for carrying you through your life. We can sometimes get caught up in what society is asking of us. And it's nice to take a little bit of time to tune into our bodies and notice, hey, you're doing a great job. You got me out of bed this morning. You walked me through my formative years, probably ran me through my formative years. You bring me to where I need to go cradle me when I'm feeling sad, You're always holding me. Thank you. Thank you. Hands coming together, Anjali Mudra, heart center, feeling the thumbs pressing into the sternum, bowing the head slightly, perhaps feeling your heartbeat against your thumbs. Taking a moment to thank yourself for taking the time out of your day to do something that is just for you. Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavantu. May all beings everywhere be happy and free. The divine light in me honors, acknowledges, and bows to the divine light in you. Thank you for joining me. Namaste.